Well, I first uh, came to a Frankwood Wright site, specifically Falling Water, when my father took me when I was 13 years old. And being the engineer that he is, he took me to see it being uh, rebuilt, specifically the cantilevers uh, restored. And that cemented my interest not only in Wright, but in architecture. I found myself a few years later at Miami University at uh, uh, studying architecture, and there John Reynolds was a professor who had just completed um, some work with his students of furniture in the servant's sitting room at Falling Water. And so I soon enrolled in one of his studios my junior year, and these are some images of the Froebel gift sets that were educational tools that Wright himself used in his youth. And we constructed these as classmates by hand and then used these blocks uh, to analyze the underlying and undergirding organizational principles of, on site at both Falling Water and the Westcott House. These are also drawings that we did, Warp and Wolf studies, uh, analyzing how the architecture weaves into the landscape, Falling Water shown on the left and Westcott House on the right. And this work culminated in our studio's uh, work for the Westcott House, a visitor and education center proposal for site master planning, as well as my student work as a uh, student housing for those studying at Falling Water. And as my professional career began after uh, my schooling, I ended up at Bolin Swinsky Jackson. Pictured here on the right is the barn at Falling Water, one of the first projects of theirs I came to know. I was attracted to them because of their humane modernism and many of the same principles that undergirded Wright's work were present in theirs. I continued my relationship, uh, Marta seen here in the left, uh, teaching some students uh, with both John Reynolds and uh, both these Wright sites through interactive studio courses held during the summer as well as crits held virtually much as we're holding this virtually now. And then Marta was so kind of to ask Peter, our firm's founder and myself, to help envision a education and visitor center for their own site. And these are some of the site master planning drawings that we did, which were greatly inspired by the work that I did there as a student. Uh, I was able to continue to work with some of John's great students at Falling Water itself. This is the design build studio that uh, he hosted and they were designing a screening element to help shield cars of the staff from those entering uh, Falling Water as a visitor. And you can just see here the interplay of light, uh, the cues they're taking from nature, uh, not in the same uh, necessarily language as right, but with the same inspiration, um, looking to dissolve into the natural background. And uh, I was privileged to be part of that. And even more privileged when John asked us, uh, Peter, shown here on the right, and myself in the center, uh, if we would come and look at some of the students' work and the proposals they were working on for dwellings at uh, the Falling Water uh, compound, if you will. But uh, they also asked if we might participate in uh, designing residence there. And Falling Water is seen here in the lower left. What was eventually the High Meadow Dwellings, as they're known in the upper right, the High Meadow Studio, sit on a hill above Falling Water with views to the meadow uh, beyond. And one enters this project through the woods. And there was an existing split level home there. And you rise up from the forest uh, floor and enter into the space and it elevates you over the meadow on a series of nimble columns. And as I was studying this even as a student in 2008 is an image that I did while at Miami and on the right, an image I did several years later at BCJ, I was looking at and exploring what uh, architecture looks like when it touches the ground and what is that relationship between earth and sky. And part of that expression is how the roof of this communal porch area at the Falling Water uh, High Meadow residences opens up to the sky and the views beyond of the Western Pennsylvania Laurel Highlands. 
and uh, is a great place for congregating students in the evening, as well as places for mealtimes. The units themselves are quite modest, really focusing on framing the view and creating connections to the outside world. And the shrouds themselves capture cool morning breezes and shield from the heat of the summer sun. The companion project to this was a studio component, and that was an addition to an existing garage, which was related to the existing split level home. And this provides students and resident artists the ability to study in a studio environment on site while connected to nature, also providing them with the great fabrication capabilities uh, in this wood shop. And as art artists and architects are prone to do, we burn the midnight oil. And so this studio serves as a lantern within the forest, uh, guiding the way for students to come and work even late into the evening. And one of the great privileges of being able to work on these incredible sites, both Westcott and Falling Water, has been the ability to continue the mission of right sites, and many of whom have a mission of education. And I think all can learn from right. And I've been blessed to and learn and grow. And also the wonderful relationships that we've gotten to form. Uh, this is Linda Wagner here, pictured with Peter and myself, right after High Meadow was completed. I've had the pleasure of working with Marta and now Kevin, and uh, it is a great reminder that we can learn from right and continue to grow in that tradition. Thank you.